Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Starkey Farmstead. Okay, guys, my name is Samantha. My husband, Steve, and I run a two-acre debt-free farmstead in St. Helena Parish in Louisiana. And what do I mean by farmstead? We are homestead exempt. We have no mortgage, and we actually farm it. I apologize about all the grass breakthrough you see in our uh, spring and summer garden back here. It happens. We didn't have time to tarp it. If you notice over here, it's our fall garden. It was tarped. Big difference. We use a heavy mulch, no-till, organic regenerative method of farming here at Starkey Farmstead. We also have over 90 plus small livestock. We have quail. We have chickens. We have meat rabbits. So we also have red wigglers and black soldier fly lore by now. So I guess you could say we have five. Today, guys, I'm just gonna run through some real quick, what am I doing to prep for fall? Because it's the first time I think I've ever done a video that I wasn't running with sweat and my hair literally wasn't like doing the humid hair thing. It is beautiful weather here in Southeast Louisiana right now. The wind is blowing. It's amazing. The leaves are starting to fall from the oak tree that overshadows part of my garden. Let me turn around so you can see that big bad boy right there. I love that tree. And so basically what I'm doing today is I'm, I am prepping for the fall. We're not in the fall by any means. It could be 98 degrees again tomorrow and the sun will be out. It'll be so humid you don't even want to open up your door. I am taking my time today. Just so you guys know, um, I began to run fever last week, last Tuesday, and I literally ran fever through Saturday. So it knocked me off my feet. Like I was still canning. I was still getting pumpkin transplants into the soil. I didn't have a choice. I mean, sometimes like you flat don't have a choice. My husband, Stephen, works across the street, literally not even five minutes from where I am standing right now. Um, for Lion King Ministries. Thank you, God, for that steady income to work for our pastor, which is amazing because it just gives him a place where he can grow as a young Christian, and, and I'm super excited about that. It also is a place where he's not really worried about any of this stuff coming down from the government with vaccine mandatory things and, and all of that. That does not affect us, so I'm super excited about that opportunity that God put in place for he and I. Um, another thing that, uh, you know, so he's across the street, he works 40 hours and then he comes home and he literally works another 40 hours. So he's working 80 hour weeks. And for all you people out there, um, where one person has to leave the farm to work or both people do, I can feel your pain because though I am at home and I'm able to work, two acres is enough for one person. And I try to keep speaking that to people. Like it is a lot to get your systems, sustainable loop systems in place so that you're working smarter and not harder on two acres with one person. That's a lot of work. I work hard, guys. Though I will tell you this, I have never physically been stronger in my life. 50 pound sack of anything, I can just lift it. When I started this journey two years ago, I had trouble you can't really tell, but my property is on a slope. The back, way back there, it's, it's like a nice steady incline. Wait, if I stand on my driveway, you might can see it better. So it's a nice steady incline. And so as I began, can, can you kind of see it? It goes down. Well, when you're pushing a wheelbarrow coming this way, anywhere on my property, it, from the front to the back, it slopes. When I started this journey, when God first gave me this vision, for me to push the wheelbarrow, a full wheelbarrow, up that slope across the property, especially if I was trying to go at an angle across the property, so I'm angled and I'm inclining, by the end, I'd be sweating, out of breath, and unable to do it. I now can push that wheelbarrow back and forth 10, 15, 20 times no blisters, barely, barely realize what I'm doing. Start small, guys. Start small. It is a physical, it is mental, it is spiritual. Nat just got into my eye. It is 
in Louisiana, it's bug infested. It, it can be really difficult. It can be really difficult to force your body to get into line with what your brain and your spirit's telling you to do. So back to what I was saying, I got pretty sick. No, it wasn't COVID, it wasn't the flu, flat the crud, you know, just the crud. Changing of the seasons, it hit me here, then it hit me here, then it hit me here, and then it hit me here. And then the fever came. So the fever's now gone, it's Monday morning, but I still feel weak. And now my flesh is like a big gluttonous stick because you know, it's pretty much had minimal physical labor for five days. And even though my head's still congested, you can probably hear it in my voice, I can definitely tell I'm breathing out of my mouth, not out of my nose very much. My body is like, I don't wanna do this. I don't wanna do this. And I'm like, well, you have to, because we have to prep for the fall. So let me show you what little I'm gonna do today. I'm not gonna overwhelm myself because I did almost pass out in the yard putting pumpkins in. And I literally, I felt the Spirit, the Holy Spirit come against me like, oh, stop, stop, Sam. And I was like, whoa, okay, God. Well, you know, I'm just trying to move in the opposite spirit here. My body wants me to lay down, but my, my brain knows I need to do this. And God's like, you're being ridiculous. So I put the wheelbarrow up and I went in the house and I took the thermometer and I had 101.7 fever. I almost passed out of my yard. Like I was basically crawling down the 100 foot row, drilling a little hole, putting a little transplant and then wobbling back to the wheelbarrow to get manure and compost and worm casting, side dress, put the hay back. It was ridiculous. It, I, I should have stopped, but I'm kind of one of those people like nothing's going to keep me down mentality. And sometimes guys, you need rest. You know, so I learned a lot. I did learn a lot. Let me show you my little piles of what I'm fixing I'm to do. breaking up leaves. Why? Because we're moving into fall. Now, the thing about oak leaves, okay, they take a really long time to break down. So what I'm doing, I've got a pile here. I've got a pile over there. No, they're not huge piles. I could have gone a little faster if I'd have used my husband's blower, but I'm telling y'all my body is out of shape. Five days, no physical labor, and I can feel it. So what I'm doing is just raking. I'm enjoying the wind. I'm enjoying some fresh air. I'm letting my body, I'm not pushing myself. I'm just raking up leaves. I mean, my mom used to do this for fun. So that's literally what I'm kind of doing today. I'm gonna get these piles of leaves. I'm gonna make it a little bigger. And I'm gonna go get my riding lawnmower. And I'm going back and forth, back and forth. And I'm gonna shred these leaves. I'm just gonna shred them as small as I can get them. I used to have a push mower I could do that with, but it finally kapooped on me. So I have to use the ride lawn mower. So what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna rake it up and put it in this wheelbarrow over here where I did a tiny bit of weeding in the garden, just a little bit, because I was checking some things out and I was wanting to look at some root systems and some plants that have really not done well. So I've got some really cool stuff in this wheelbarrow. I'm gonna get those leaves that are shredded into this wheelbarrow and I'm gonna go dump it in the chicken coop. Okay, so it's been really wet in the main part where they make my compost for me. Because if you've watched any of our videos, you know that I actually compost in my chicken coop. Okay, like that is where I do all my composting. I no longer use any of my composting systems around the yard. Not doing it, too much work, too much work. I am working smarter, not harder. I have a lot to do. Why would I spend even an hour flipping with a pitchfork what my chickens will do for me for free? All right, they, they're like, hey girl, can you, they see the wheelbarrow right now. Can you guys watch? Can you see my chicken coop way back there? Hold on, let me turn the camera they notice, off. Like chickens are not stupid. They keep coming back to the fence closest to me where they can see me because they see the wheelbarrow. My chickens see the, this wheelbarrow specifically because this one fits through the gate that goes back there. So this is my moving compost, moving manure wheelbarrow. The other one is solely for the garden. Now these chickens, they know. They're like, oh, hey guys. Look at Sam. Now they're over there all making happy clucky noises. They're like, she's fixing to layer the coop again. They need that, guys. They need that. They will scratch. They will create the most beautiful compost you've ever seen. It's been really damp in Louisiana the last two months. So what I'm trying to do is bring some nice, small, dry material that I can roll 
into, I'll use a shovel and a pitchfork and I'll literally flip the whole coop over, then layer this down on top. So what that will happen, they will get on top of the dry material and they'll begin to dig. As they're scratching through what I'm fixing to bring in there, they'll be tearing apart the clumpy, wet, matted material that's gotten too soggy and letting that air dry for me, basically speeding up the compost. Okay, because I need this compost to be ready for the fall garden. So when I say, let me show you what we're doing, it's a twofold thing. I'm cleaning up the yard a little bit, getting these leaves. Don't put your leaves in bags. Don't do it. Do not burn them. Do not waste them. Leaves are one of the most available and the cheapest form of compost. I mean, not compost. I apologize. Form of mulch that you can get your hands on. So don't do it, guys. I see people in the cities just bagging them up and get rid of them. I don't care if you have flower beds. Dump the leaves in there. They will rot down. They will bring the earthworms and other decomposers to the surface. They will put organic matter back into your soil, hence officially amending your soil with no cost. You've got to think about what you're doing. Okay, so I've got the leaves. I'm going to shred them with the lawnmower, pile them into my handy-dandy wheelbarrow. I'm going to roll them into the chicken coop. I'm going to flip the chicken coop over, and then I'm going to dump it, spread it out, and I'm going to let the chickens get to work. The other pile of leaves that I'm going to run over with the lawnmower, I'm also going to put into the wheelbarrow, will go into my worm bin, because I was noticing the other day that they have essentially eaten through everything, and one side's getting really close to needing to be run. <sighs> Sorry. They needing to be run. So what that means, I need to run my worm castings. Worm castings are worm poop, aka vermicomposting. So I'm going to take these shredded leaves because it's so much easier to, to, for the worms to break something down that's tiny than large. You gotta remember, they also, like me, don't have teeth. You gotta make it easy for them, guys. I know, like, my husband is really thoughtful. You know, when we go to eat somewhere, he tries to remember when we're going that if it's something with a lot of like fried foods or double batter foods, that's off the plate for me at this at this stage of my life. So he has to help, you know, kind of, so I'm thinking like my husband does for me, I'm doing for my worms. Like I've got to make sure that the food that I'm putting in there is in small enough bits and pieces that they can ingest it faster because the longer that food sits or that material sits in your bin, you are going to bring rats, mice, Cock cockroaches, earwigs, black soldier flies, beetles, um, snails, you'll get mites. I mean, like insanity will begin to happen inside of your bins if the material is too large for your worms to break down quickly. So I blend their food. I make sure everything is moist when it goes in the bin and I break it down to the smallest possible piece before I put it in there, which then speeds up my turnaround on my worm poop, which is also an income for our form. So if you are looking for worm, worm castings and you're looking for organic worm castings, you're looking for worm castings that are going to have ca cocoons as well as live worms. And that is actually going to benefit your garden with no toxins and bring some nutrient density back to your food. Hey guys, Give me a call, because Starkey Farmstead, we make some beautiful worm castings. It's what's in my garden. It's what I grow with. People are like, so how are you fertilizing? Again, I use three fertilizers. Well, more like one fertilizer, two soil amendments. Worm castings, compost, rabbit manure. When do you do it? Spring, summer, fall, winter. Spring, summer, fall, winter. I transplant in it. I seed in it, I side dress with it. It's all I use. It's all I use. And though my garden has got a lot of grass growing right now, I'm here to tell you guys, I still have cucumber, summer squash, zucchini, bell peppers, a few tomato plants, not many, many didn't make it, and jalapenos that I planted in May that are still producing right now. In fact, that's one of the things I have to do today is go out there and just kind of do a small harvest. So, if you are feeding the soil 
The soil will then feed your plants, okay? You don't need to feed with a 13, 13, 13. A lot of that just runs off into the water systems, okay? And it's expensive, like truly expensive. Feed the soil. The soil feeds the plants. Healthy soil, healthy plants. Fertilizers, pesticides, fungicides, the chemicalized ones, the commercialized ones, have only been around, truly guys, since around like 1950. Before that, compost, worm castings, manure. Okay, I use rabbit manure, A, because I raise rabbits, so, you know, use what you have on hand, and it's a cold manure. But could you use chicken manure? Yeah, because my chickens make my compost. What do you think they're doing in my compost all day? Pooping. So essentially, my compost is basically like a fertilizer. Now, I do know, okay, that over time I may raise certain nutrients to too high using such a high nitrogen fertilizer like in my compost with the chickens and the rabbits. I have rabbits on the other side than a racking pen. So my chicken coop is essentially quail, rabbits, and chicken all pooping in my compost. So I do know that I may push up certain levels and I may have to eventually come up with another way to compost with more carbon, less nitrogen. I do know that. I'm just saying, my soil was 25 years of a monocrop of grass. So it's so deficient. So for the next couple of years, guess what? I'll be just fine. And I can always fall back to just worm castings if I need to, okay? Because they eat a lot of leaves and, you know, brown materials for me. So I can always fall back on that. So I hope this guy, you know, helps you guys know that it doesn't matter what you're doing to prep for the fall, but you do need to do something. I, if my leaves are falling in Southeast Louisiana, I know, don't don't tell me they're not. I know that you've got some leaves falling around you. Get out. Here outside. it is. My first pile and I essentially made crop circles in my yard. So I dropped the blade all the, way on, all the way down to a two and I did scalp it a few places. My husband is gonna just, I don't know, he's hilarious, but he's gotta come in right here from work and he's gonna be like, Samantha, baby, I told you not to drop it below a four. Well, you know, I needed needed to, to do some mulching and so I made crop circles but aren't they pretty I mean they really are and with a rod lawnmower so I basically just kept going around circles until I shot most of it to the center because I'm working smarter and not harder baby I told you you're scalping the yard you have plenty of grass but I'm not being disrespectful to him I'm really not he'll understand when I tell him dude come on like I needed some leaves and some grass clippings to get my compost going for my worms. Men, I'm just one person. Oh, come on, Steve. And before it's over with, my very sweet bear of a husband's gonna be like, but yeah, we now have crop circles. I wonder if I could sell the story. Crop circles in Southeast Louisiana. People believe all kind of crazy stuff. Surely they'll believe aliens did it. Maybe I should just tell my husband that. Honey, I didn't do that. Aliens did. Right? We'll see how that works. In the chicken run. So this is the chicken run that we're staying in. Andrew. You see all the chickens. Say hi to our newest hen. She is being acclimated to the bigger ladies. They can't hurt her, but they are curious about her. So this keeps her safe until she gets a little bit bigger, so much smaller she is than, say, big girl right there. There's our mama, our broody, our latest broody hen and her babies. And so here are the quail. Automatic water. Here are the quail. Quail stink. Quail stink. So what we've got going under here is a deep mulch system. All right? That's gonna encourage the chickens to scratch through the quail poop, mixing it up. Let me show you why. You need to roll your coop 
before you add your deep mulch. You guys see all these flies? So manure attracts flies. And they love it. They love it because look at Miss Pretty. Come on, get off, get off my wheelbarrow. Yeah, don't be a glutton. It's all yours anyway. Right, ladies? Tell everybody, it's ours anyway. We know it. Louisiana loves to make you a liar. You guys see this? You see that? Okay, so super humidity came to join me today. It was feeling great 45 minutes ago. What is this nonsense? So Louisiana for you. All right, let me show you guys real quick. The flipped over coop, now that the sun is out, is actually perfect timing. It's gonna help to dry out all of this compost. There it is. And it's deep. That's what I was trying to tell you guys. If you watch any of our other videos, you can tell how deep it is when you're outside this coop and you look in. But it was matted down. So what I did was use a pitchfork and the shovel, flipped all that around, basically pushed the flies away. It actually, to me, kind of smells like a cow pen in here right now. With this met, this wet, kind of muddy, slightly manure smell. Over here, it doesn't get as wet, you can tell. And you can see where the rabbits do their droppings underneath and their hay, things that come out of their pen. And how the chickens just stretch that back out. So the girls are like, hey, we have some stuff to work with here. I'm gonna get that shredded grass and leaves and get that dumped all over here. Happy chickens. Happy chickens. That's what I was telling you guys. Let them be chickens. You don't necessarily have to free range to have A organic, B healthy, or C happy chickens. But you do have to do a little bit of work to facilitate a natural ecosystem for your animals. Like I said, I did a little weeding in the garden. They're happy to eat those weed seeds. You guys saw my crop circles. They're even willing to eat the grass. The grass is gonna heat up. It's gonna help dry out the damp compost that's already in here. The birds are gonna mix it in All this is gonna to turn to beautiful compost in about a week. And now if it does rain a little bit more in the next couple of days, they have a bedding to walk on. The water will just go right through that cut grass and those shredded leaves and they'll just walk on it. Will it push all this back down? Yep. Hence why I keep my broken shovel and my pitchfork right here, literally right beside the coop. Now for you guys that are just beginning to watch us or have never watched one of our videos, you know that this whole area stays open all night. I do not shut this door even though it is made to be shut. There's one reason why. My German Shepherd sleeps right there on the porch. This is technically his run that the chickens and the quail and the rabbits took over because we started getting hit by a lot of stray dogs you can notice I have her as close to this pen as possible, but still outside of it, mainly because I just didn't want to add any more into this area. But our German Shepherd sleeps in here. Why? It's open on top, except for the actual coop. The coop has got a top. It's got a shaded area. That's where the roosting poles are. Okay. And you got your chicken house over here. I can get my eggs from the backside, so I never even have to walk into this area. But the German Shepherd can protect the quail, the chickens and the rabbits, where you see that plastic, there are rabbits on the other side. The plastic is there to keep the chickens from getting up on top of the rabbit cages. Rabbits cannot give chickens diseases, but chickens most definitely can make your rabbits sick. So you have to do, that's why it's ugly, that's why it's there, and I leave it there. It keeps my rabbits protected from any diseases that my chickens may unknowingly, if they tried to get up on top, and they would, give to my rabbits. So you guys have to think through your systems, but try to set up sustainable loop systems that will support a healthy ecosystem. This is a healthy ecosystem, guys. 
this is healthy. Yep, you see some poop on their roosting poles and all that nonsense, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, they're chickens, they poop 24 seven, they poop in their sleep. But they're happy, nobody's bothering anybody else. They have lots of little places they can perch and get on top of during the day because even though they're flightless birds, they actually, and I catch them all the time, outside of this coop, and it's a seven-foot fence. So that tells you something. Chickens can hop, and then they can fly at least seven to ten feet in the air. Traditionally, they roosted in trees. So quit treating your chickens like they're something other than chickens. Let them be chickens. All right? Let your animals do what God created them to do. Hi, beautiful. And you'll have happy animals. Tell them you're taking a bath. All right, they just, they need space, okay? But you don't have to free range to have happy animals. And here's another problem free ranging where I'm located. Do you guys see these woods? My, my chickens wouldn't make it, they just wouldn't make it. When I had a small flock, I did allow free ranging and I never could find the eggs because I'm not walking out there. That is two foot of mulch around that with pine straw and leaves and getting bit by a rattlesnake or a water moccasin or any of that nonsense and it attracts rats to the property when the eggs are just wherever they want to be so no my chickens are kept in the coop they're they're kept in here they have all this room to roam and play they get up underneath my porch they dig holes under my porch they um well obviously they poop on my porch because they like to sit up on my rails and that's okay that's okay i don't mind that i just pressure wash it every now and then i used to rinse it off every day but that got to be too much so now i have happy chickens they can move around my german shepherd has free range again to this whole area he's trained to that guys a german shepherd it's in their name shepherd all right they are livestock guardians that is what they were bred to be all right, so if you train your German Shepherd, that's your best defense. That is 85 pounds. He'll come, he'll come get up in the coop when the babies are hatching just to see because he's nosy. He won't hurt them. He's trained not to. Watch some of our videos. Watch how we trained him. Put some time and effort into the systems in the yard. It will pay you back a thousand fold. Like I said, I was sick from Tuesday to Saturday. Yet my, all my animals are still here, still healthy, still accounted for. Because my systems were in place and when there was a tiny crisis. Because an illness, a death, you have to go out of town unexpectedly. Those are tiny crises for a form, okay? But if you set up your systems in a way that they are sustainable, then you can move through and with. It's not life altering, life ending. Like I see people talk about, you know, my animals, my chickens are free range, so I can't go anywhere in the evening. What I'm doing right here is technically free range. Okay, I cut my grass, they get all the grass clippings and they love it. The chicks are fixing to get some of my two tiny roosters that are still in quarantine in the front. They're fixing to get some too. So it's not just the main chickens. Everybody's fixing to get a smorgasbord of cut grass. Is that going to hurt them? No, no, they're over here eating away, but they're safe guys. When you free range, you're opening the door to predators, theft, disease, and accidents. Okay, plus, now you're on their schedule. They are not on yours. It is your form. I have to run errands. I can't be like, oh, I can't run to the store because my chickens are free ranging right now. Oh, wait, I just got a phone call from the school. My kid fell and broke his arm. I can't leave. Oh, wait, I have to leave my chickens. Come back. They're all dead. All right, or a lot of you have dogs but they're untrained so they are a threat to your chickens but you want to free range you're not thinking through the process that's all i'm saying i'm not judging you i'm an educator by trade trying to tell you that you must train the dog then set the system up bring the dog into the system my german shepherd sleeps right here if you go back through our playlist you will notice that we have a video out about a brutal dog attack on our main rabbitry, which is across the two acres on the other side of the pond. The German Shepherd couldn't get over there because he was over here guarding this end of the yard. None of this got hit. Those dogs, even though there's a fence, 
I promise you, my German Shepherd can get over this and out of this pen, he has done it numerous times. He will, he's trained to stay in here when I put him in here. But if a threat comes in the yard, he can easily, and he absolutely will, find his way out of this pen to fight. Now, here's the thing. The small form dog can't stay in here. He gets bored, he starts ch chasing roosters, it gets ugly. So he must stay outside of the pen. He sleeps on the back porch. He went to the rabbit tree to stop the fight, or stop the seven dogs, stop them from killing the rabbits, realized, hey, I'm 20 pounds or seven, I'm one. He came back and when I tell y'all that he growled, barked, snarled, and, and clawed at the door, which he has never done once in the seven years I've had this dog. Has he clawed at my door to go in or out? That is not acceptable. It is, we break those habits, not happening. This dog was going insane on the porch. My husband said when I woke up, I knew. I knew, Sam. He just went ahead and got the shotgun and the flashlight before he even opened the door. Like, he already knew. Because you got to know your dogs. My dogs, when they start barking at night, we're coming outside with a gun. Why? Because my German Shepherd is silent. He's silent when you pull up in the yard. If you'll hear in some of this video, you heard the little dog bark. That was a male person. He does one bark, two bark. That's it. Somebody's here. Don't know this person. Rough rough i spoke to him he shut up german shepherd never made a noise you will never know he's there that's how i trained him i don't need you to know he's there i just need to know he's there that makes sense they're not just farm dogs and livestock guardians they're home protection dogs their behavior at night is completely different than their behavior during the day and that is how they're trained to be i highly suggest Upstate Canine Academy out of New York City. That's when Hammer was three months old. I found this gentleman, began to watch him rehabilitate German Shepherds and train. And now when you go back and you watch our shorts and our training videos on how to train your dog and you see Hammer, beautiful. I mean, this dog, this dog has been, we have measured him bottom feet now from the ground up jumping. His, his toes on his back legs hit the 10 foot mark. So that means his head was probably around 13 feet in the air. Okay, I mean, that's extreme. That's extreme for an untrained dog for that type of sport. He's just a farm dog working with me, but I and my husband can get him 13 feet in the air. You know what I'm saying? Like, your dogs are amazing. Your kids, amazing. Your farm can be amazing. So whatever God has put in your hand, get out there. Get out there. Set up sustainable loop systems go with your gut you have the mind of christ is what the bible tells us quit thinking you don't know what to do quit being afraid to try it what's the worst that's going to happen something might die adjust be honest with yourself if you need to repent repent make a change and keep pushing guys quit being afraid to fail i fail more than i succeed on this form but boy when i succeed whoop, i hit it out the wall i mean i'm mean, all the way i'm nailing it all the way but i fail a lot and I keep pretty good records on myself, so I, I can actually prove in court that I fail a lot. But when I succeed, guys, when I succeed, I do it. Like, 4th of July fireworks, I do it. So you guys have a blessed day. Thank you for watching Starkey Formstead. Please like, comment, and subscribe. We care. We care about you having home protection. We care about your form. We care about your livestock. And we care that you're getting the cleanest, most nutrient-dense food possible. Prepare, for it is coming. You guys have a blessed day.